We're watching another fashion industry blockbuster unfold. Tapestry is betting big on Capri Holdings. Tapestry announced it will spend $8.5 billion to buy its longtime rival. The transaction will add new brands to its portfolio like Versace, Michael Kors, and Jimmy Choo. So what does this all mean for Tapestry? And how does it fit into the larger M&A action we've been seeing this year, of course, in retail? Joanne Crevosarit joins us now, Tapestry CEO. Joanne, great uh, to see you here. Congrats on this deal. I know things like this do not happen overnight. Now, the market reaction was tough. I mean, shares of Tapestry went down with 16% on the deal. What did the market not get, uh, Joanne? What did they miss? Well, I'll start by saying first, great to see you, Brian. And I know you love brands. So I, this is a, a very attractive uh, combination. We're establishing a powerful global house of iconic fashion brands, uniting, as you said, Coach Kate Spade and Stuart Weitzman with Versace, Jimmy Choo and Michael Kors. And we're excited about bringing these brands together um, because of the compelling financial opportunity. There's excellent strategic fit it's immediately accretive, and we see significant runway beyond just the initial uh, combination. And I think we're confident that uh, investors will see this compelling opportunity. Um, you know, this is a this is a story to watch, Brian. What makes the transaction so compelling? Well, again, you know, it is about. Um, the strategic fit, you know, we're thinking long term about our business and the, the strategic fit of this uh, transaction, it builds our portfolio in a great category. We play in a resilient $200 billion luxury market that includes handbags, footwear and apparel. And these brands are incredibly, uh, they're distinctive in that market, but they're also complementary. If you think about our two businesses, it, this uh, deepens our access to a higher end luxury consumer that is quite resilient. Um, there's geographic uh, diversification here where the Capri business is, has a relatively higher penetration in Europe. Our business is relatively higher, pen higher penetration in Asia. Um, and it broadens our product offering because the, the product categories are also complementary where the Capri business has a higher penetration in lifestyle categories like footwear and apparel. And we see opportunity to grow those categories across our portfolio. So on a number of different levels, uh, these businesses are complementary. And then we believe that we have an opportunity to leverage the tapestry platform to drive a direct to consumer opportunity. You know, we've built this strong consumer engagement platform and elevated our direct business. And we think that applies as well to the Capri businesses. I've been covering your company for, uh, for a while, uh, Joanne. I, going back to it was just called Coach. And I remember that 2017 acquisition of Kate Spade. This was before you. There were challenges integrating that business, again, before you. What is the institutional knowledge inside a tapestry to, to better integrate a, a company like a Capri, which is a lot bigger than Capri? I mean, with Capri, which is a lot bigger than what you bought a couple years ago in Kate Spade. Exactly. Well, we have experience in, in integrating, and I would say that we've learned a lot over those years, right? And the importance and, 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 and the things that are important to, that we've learned, the importance of clarifying the brand positioning, not walking away from the unique and distinctive act, um, aspects of each of these brands, these brands are iconic and they have, you know, we've fielded a lot of research in this pro in, in the process. Um, they are strong brands. They're well positioned in attractive markets and market segments. So our first learning has been clarifying the brand positioning. And in our transformation over the last three years, we've done exactly that across our brands clarifying that brand positioning and crystallizing the target consumer to make sure that we're strengthening our execution behind the, the product offering and the experiences for that target consumer. We've also strengthened our teams and ways of working, embedding data and analytics. We've spent a lot of time, I know, over the years talking about that, Brian, embedding those analytics in the hands of decision makers to make our business better, move faster, and more responsive to consumer data that we have. And we've invested in brand building activities over the past few years. We've more than doubled our marketing spend. So as we work to engage consumers and integrate these brands, it will be with that focus on continuing to build the brands. We're also going to be quite choiceful about where we decide to integrate and where we don't, knowing that there are some places that it, it makes sense to have a lighter touch. And, and businesses like Versace that's playing in a, in a different space with a higher end consumer where we don't have the experience or scale, 
the integration will be a lighter touch. Um, and in the places where we have experience in scale, we'll, we'll bring that scale to benefit the, the acquired brands. One thing that I think uh, the street is, is realizing today, and I don't think they realized it yesterday, Joanne, is the international play here. Um, it seems like there's going to be a new unlock or, or new areas of growth, notably in Asia, where Tapestry and Coach have really had, has had a strong position. Does this better allow you to, to compete with the Louis Vuitton in those high growth emerging markets? Well, we think there are opportunities around the world with this uh, th this combination. You know, they have a relatively stronger business in Europe, where we ha we are re also relatively underpenetrated. So we think there are opportunities on both sides. We can learn from the Capri brands, and they can learn from us in Asia. To your point, where we've had more success and we have higher penetration. Um, overall, this this combination provides more balance and diversification around the world, which is great for our business. Uh, we have seen the importance of global diversification over the last three years. We've seen different parts and regions of the company accelerate at different rates um, and, and face challenges at different rates. And that's been really the underpinning of our ability to deliver consistent, strong results quarter after quarter through a very tumultuous time because we have this global footprint and diversification. And this combination only adds, adds to that. I think one of the other uh, reactions here, Joanne, is that Capri was, was struggling. You know, its shares were uh, underperforming yours the past year ahead of this deal. What do you have to fix there? You know, if I take a step back and talk about our overall vision, it's, it's taking iconic brands, brands with true heritage and design and craftsmanship. And, and there aren't a lot of those kinds of brands in the market. So I do think it's important to take a minute and just appreciate the, the quality of the brands that we're, we're bringing on. But when you combine those quality, high, high quality, iconic brands and put them on this modern consumer engagement platform, that's where we can deliver more innovation more connectivity with consumers and more relevance, which you know we see that as luxury at its best. And that is really the power of this combination and I think um, why we're so excited about, about the acquisition. Before I let you go, uh, Joanne, on a personal note, what does doing a deal like this mean to you? I, I go back, I, I originally met you when you were Abercrombie & Fitch. You helped turn the finances around there. You came here uh, really under a tough situation initially as the, the CFO, uh, quickly rose the ranks to CEO. You've turned around this company. What is it like to pull a trigger on probably one of the biggest transformational deals in retail in the past five years? I see incredible potential. And, and the, the thing that gives me most energy and most uh, gratification is seeing our teams win. We have such quality teams around the world that have, it's harnessing the power of our teams that has really been the underpinning of our success. Um, it's very clear in the market. I've been in this business, Brian, even before those, those experiences, since I graduated from college, 35 years, it's moved and changed a lot. The focus on the consumer and the agility that is needed to really engage consumers today, those are the capabilities that we're building. And I get a lot of gratification from harnessing the en the energy and the passion of now we'll have 33,000 team members across the globe. And I think that's a powerful, it's a powerful opportunity, one that we don't take lightly, but I think it, it will solidify our growth going forward. Uh, well, good luck on this integration. Thanks for giving Yahoo Finance some time. We look forward to following this journey. Joanne uh, Kravoy-Sarak, good to see you. Have a good week and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it.